Houston Airport. Um, if you can't tell already, I'm driving the Type R. I got the cruise control set. It's nice. You actually have the open road to use the adaptive function. Anyway, I'll see you guys at the airport. So just pulled in here to um, Chevron to get some fuel. And look at there. It's like a 2015 Mercedes 663 AMG Edition 1. And that was Edition 1 because it's got the graphics on it. Um, I'm assuming it's got the red uh, contrast stitching and everything else. Got a nice spot over here next to a clean S2000. Very clean. It's like an AT1. I always wanted to drive one of these cars. Never had the chance to. Anyway. Us back once I get checked in the airport. This is the first time that I don't have to check a bag, which is nice. Uh, I'm just going to do the carry on, so I'm kind of I'm a little happy that. Uh, just go straight in. I have uh, pre-check and clear to get me through security. So it is 5.15. I'm walking up to security now. We'll see how long it takes me to get through. Put the camera away, get my IDs out, and see you guys in a bit. All right, so I made it through security. It took about five minutes. Uh, I went through at 5.15. Actually, technically 5.16 went it through. And uh, I think from there, uh, clear was a breeze. The pre-check took me a little bit just because, uh, you know, they are randomly selecting people or whatever. Anyway, go to the gate and I'll see you guys at the airport in Charlotte.
the car now. So what we're gonna do next thing is uh, I'm gonna text the uh, host and then we'll get started and pick up the car. I apologize, probably a little noisy. Charlotte is uh, pretty crowded out here. So let's go ahead and do that. Go ahead and exit. I don't wait for any bags. Alright guys, here we go. Just got off the elevator and there it is. There's a Tesla. So text the host, he's uh I got the pictures of the car and then I will he will unlock it for me remotely. Um it's got some uh, got some curb rash right there. So I curved it. So I'm gonna do a quick walk around and then I will do my official pictures for the Turo app, it's always good to document everything in the app, and then uh, we'll get underway. So, this is here, he's got a charging. I won't show you in here, but I'm just. This is the new camera that Lexi got me, the GoPro Hero 10. Um, it's got a front screen. When we park the car, all the cameras um, can, like these side cameras here on the side, uh -huh. and the back camera in the front, uh -huh. they all can record. So when someone gets close to your car or someone bumps into your car, I'm not going to record. They'll get all four angles of the car. Okay, but, so now you tap it, you get to see who yeah, what it was. Yeah, I don't know if he'll let me see it because it's his car, but I don't know if he'll let me view it or not. So this is somebody's personal car? Yeah, this is a Turo, so it's like an Airbnb for cars. So people put their personal really? cars up for rent. Are you serious? So yeah, that was what it captured. So somebody's renting, you're renting somebody's personal car? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Well, some people have... They, they buy them just so they can rent them out. Correct. And then some people have their personal cars. Then you th you thought about Didn't you say you were going to do that one time? I've been thinking about it. I still think about it. But the hard part is on call is meeting the... The people. Yeah, your customers. Is that why they have they do that? They want you to check your re driver record and all that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Are you going to say that? Yeah. You never did that right. with no rental car before? Yeah, and then I just do the, rent, the insurance and things. And so if I'm if I anything happens to the car, I'm, I have a deductible of like... like 500 bucks. Mm -hmm. So you come over here, this is your car. You can see everything going in here. You open the trunk if you want it to. So everything's all done touchscreen. It's very self-explanatory. I can close you it. close it back? I can close it back. The front is the front trunk. Oh. Um, if I if I pop it open, I can't close it. I have to go back there and oh, shut okay. it. It's like a hood in your car. Right here? Yeah. Um, if you go in here, this is your climate control. And you can see right there, you see how the airflow is coming out. Mm -hmm. All right, so if you want to adjust your vents, just take your finger and go ahead and do it. I want you to do it. Adjust, yeah, drag on the screen and you can adjust the airflow. To make it go that yeah. way. Yep, yeah. you got higher and lower, so you can do it like that. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. the climate, you have your, your heated seat, you can leave it on auto mode, so depending on the ambient temperature and temperature of the car, it'll come automatically for you. Um, you get your heated wheel button right there, and you can just leave it auto if you just want to be like that style. Um, obviously, this is, if you put it keep, it'll always keep it at the temperature even if you got the car. Mm -hmm. So say for example if I'm want to keep the car warm, not if I'm running to some place and just park the car lock it, but mm -hmm. just keep it warm, it'll do that. Or keep it cold, for example, I don't want to have to do that. You can come in here, you can also schedule it. Mm -hmm. so, so like when I'm getting off work I can schedule it to come on like thirty minutes before I come out so it'll be warm. Yeah. And the benefit is you're plugged into a charge port if you're charging at work or something. Yeah. So that way you're not using the range. Like, yeah. Okay. Dog mode is if you have a dog in the car and to keep your dog co yeah. comfortable and they'll let the people know that um so if i put it in here and i got the car so i'm gonna do i'm gonna get the car i'm gonna tend to do the dog in here and lock the car yeah so it's oh, so people can walk up and see that your dog is comfortable correct they won't they won't break the glass you know, thinking like, you know, what's yeah, yeah. You know. But they supposed to read that screen. Well, it's it's gonna show them that they're gonna they're not gonna be, they're gonna know right away. Then why I said that screen will be on. Yeah, it'll come on automatically when it'll stay on the whole time. Okay, cause I saw it pop up when you locked the door. Yeah, um, so that's that's your climate. Um, that's 
that's where you get for there. You get your phone. You can do your phone calls here. So your phone already don't lined up on there? Yeah, I already put it on there and you can do your messaging and things like that. I don't play with that much with that one. Music. That's your music too? This is my... No, this, this, you can do a streaming. So Tesla has his own streaming system, sort uh -huh. of like Apple Music. So do you have a favorite like music to listen to? Uh -huh. You can type in like what you like. Uh -huh. So you know you type in your favorite artist and they'll do like uh -huh. almost, almost like Pandora style. Okay. And they'll do that. Or you can do Pandora or Spotify. You have a lot of different. This is what you have. Uh-huh. You got the theater. The theater will show. So you got different apps. You can watch Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus. YouTube, TikTok. So this is beneficial. Okay, you're probably like, wondering why would you do this while you're driving? But if you're charging somewhere, if you're taking a road trip and you're charging and you need to sit in the car for like, because it takes about 45 minutes to Oh, you can watch, you can watch some while yeah, you're charging. Yeah, it, it can be busy a little bit. Um, you got arcade, you can play arcades. Oh. So, this is, that, so that'll stay on while you're charging? Yeah, it can stay on, I could do it right now if I wanted to, but yeah, while you charge, it'll do it. Got a toy box. Let's see what else is in here. But yeah, it's a few things. And then for car operation, you're probably like, well, how do I do lights and stuff? Because it's not much on the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. So you have lights, just even automatic, on that high beam. You just hit your car, and everything's there. You can fold your mirrors in. Glove box, you open the glove box. Oh, yeah, too. So there's no buttons. Everything is. Yes. Mirrors. If I need just mirrors. So I do. I hit left or right, and I use this right here to left. I'm just telling you on the steering wheel what to do. Yep. Sadly, I just read that we're gonna lose the boombox feature. Which so this means if I want the driving sound on. So this sound comes out from outside the car. So I'm about to go for a ride. Oh, let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. This is the PDK transmission.
up for you to maintain your balance. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I like it. Handles very well. Very planted. All right. You I see say, how it stays planted? Yeah. I say lost control. If you look around right here, I'll show you how you lost control or whichever road you want to take back. You're in. Right now, you're in uh, drive. Mm -hmm. Put your foot. Put your left foot on the brake. Mm -hmm. uh, right foot goes down to the floor. Release the brake. are never easy. Sitting here at a supercharger charging up the Tesla. All right, so those of you who have reigned in 90, you can see here, um, I was actually on the way to the airport and it said I had no charge to get there. I said, I'll probably be at like 8%. Then as I start driving, I was driving a little faster. Um, it actually said, you know what, you need to stop. And it automatically added a waypoint along my route. So I do take one exit, uh, stopped here at the local uh, sheets right off the exit, um, plugged into the charger, went inside, and you know, got a couple snacks. And uh, you know, you use the restroom, came back out, and then it says that there's enough charge to continue the trip. So, those of you probably like, oh, how do you plan it? This is easy. I mean, it, you, as long as you put the navigation of the Tesla, the Tesla will do the math for you, figure out if you have enough charge and how much how long to sit here it told me to sit here for 10 minutes um and that was plenty when i came back out of the restroom and got my snacks it was plenty of time it was said he had plenty of time so right now i'm just recording this video but since i finished video i'm gonna unplug and continue my route all right everyone i wanted to make sure just kind of let everyone know obviously this was an unplanned trip to north carolina but it wasn't um nothing serious nothing like a definite family nothing like that uh, it was just, you know, going back home, uh, had some things I can take care of and just being at home, obviously with your mom, your parents and things, it just, you know, having to leave and fly back, you know, it's always sad. So I just wanted to clear that up, hope I didn't make it seem like that, but, um, yeah, it's just always, you know, it's always sad visiting family and having to leave. So, you know how it is. Um, I don't know some people are, I'm very close with my family. And so anyway, I'll see you guys on the next videos. All right. So after that trip, um, asked mom what she would do, what she was get rid of her Porsche Macan GTS for the Model 3 uh, performance. And her main gripe was the touch screen. Everything is done on that touch screen. And she just felt uh, it would have been more difficult to, you know, the, do the day-to-day -day operations of that screen while she's driving and she needed to make a change or, you know, so on and so forth. I know a lot of things are voice control, voice activated, but you know, like I said, if you need to make a small adjustment to your mirror or you need to do, you know, the steering wheel adjustment, um, you do need to go to the screen to do that. So I think she just felt like that wouldn't have been the ideal car for her. Um, one car she is considering is the Mustang uh, Mach-E. So I may have to find one of those and review and maybe show her a video. And so I just look around and see if I find one on Turo and rent or, you know, I don't think you know, the supply I used to think about, oh, we can go to the dealership and visit these dealerships and try to find these cars. But it's to the point, like when I got started with it, the supply had to start drying up to the point where 
you know, if I try to coordinate that with the dealership, that car usually sells before I get there. And so I'm just trying to wait for a supply to jump back up before I should do that again. But I do think that the infrastructure is increasing. I know that Tesla does have the largest network of superchargers or fast charging stations out there um, with the other charging stations like EV to go, I believe is one. And then there's Electrify America. Um, Electra America, I think, is the fastest. I think it's faster than Tesla superchargers, but they are still growing. You know, obviously, you know, the network is still expanding. So we'll see how it goes. Maybe in like 10 years from now, maybe you'll, you'll see a supercharger or you'll see a fast charger at every, you know, fuel stop that will make it more appealing, I think, for those who are considering an EV or, you know, unsure about that range and you know said because you know yeah you, you can always charge your house and start your trip your day off with a full charge but what about if you're taking a longer trip and you do you know drive a couple hours or something and you want to make sure you have enough time to get back all right but anyway thanks for watching and we'll we'll do more vlogs